guys, I'm Chris. Welcome to this week's tutorial. Let's draw together. In this week's tutorial, I'll be drawing a wild rose in Procreate, and I'll be using my new botanical brush box to show you how to draw flowers really super fast using a stamp brush tool. These guys are available for Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity, and of course, Procreate, as I'll be showing you today. And they'll also be in PNG and PDF files for those who like to work in pencil and paper. And of course, don't forget, once you finish this entire video, to share it on Instagram, tag me in the image as well as the description so I can find your artwork and feature you here in the next draw together video so of course if you are interested in these brushes you'll find them in the link below there's also a link to the goodie bag where you can grab some free goodies so let's get to it and make our canvas at 4000 by 4000 pixels 300 dpi and srgb so first i'm going to start by going and finding my guide so i'm just going to go to my brushes and i've downloaded my botanical leaves and botanical flowers so i'm going to just go into the flowers and you can see there are 54 flowers to choose from, so I'm just gonna start with this guy here. And I'm gonna put it to about 70% and just tap. And there it is. Actually, no, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So let's go up to 80%. And there she is. Okay, so that's one layer. Now I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna go and grab and make this a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna go and find, I've got some little buds down here. So I'm going to tap and use this one. This is also going to be at 80%. I'm just going to make them all the same size. But of course, we can scale them after as well. So there's one. And then I'm going to hit um, the plus sign again to make a new layer and grab this bud as well. Okay. So actually, I'm going to make sure that's also at 80%. Let's do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go and grab a little leaf just to finish this off. So I'm going to go into the leaves find something. I think this one will work nicely. So again, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to have this and that's good. So then we'll start to just arrange these. So I think I'm going to put this here, grab this guy and let's just see, might scale it a touch. Bring it in here. Okay, and then I'm going to grab this guy, scale that, and let's see, that. Perfect. Actually, let's bring him down a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so now we have our flower arranged. So I'm actually gonna merge these all together by pinching all my layers together. So now they're just on one. And of course I can scale it a little bit more if I want to as well. And there we go. I'm just gonna knock back the opacity just so that we can go over it. So with these guides, you're not gonna wanna use the original guide in your actual drawing. You're gonna wanna go over and draw it yourself. So let's do that now. I'm gonna go and grab another brush to do my line work and I'm gonna go into the inking and grab my favorite dry ink and start with outlines here. So let's just see. Somewhere around 6%, 7%. I think that should be good. Then I'm gonna go and grab a color and I'm just gonna grab this dark red. You can do whatever color you want, of course. And we have our dry ink. So I'm just gonna do the outline of my flowers first. So I'm just gonna give it a little personality with my line work. Maybe, you know, add my own little personality and flair to that. Maybe give it a little rougher edges. You know, kind of go in there like that. So this is a really easy, simple tool that helps you to sort of understand how these types of flowers look and feel and how the petals overlap and sort of that kind of thing. And it'll just give you some confidence into starting to draw flowers on your own as well. And sometimes you just wanna do something quick and fun and get onto the paintings So I'm like that too sometimes. So this will help you with that as well. Okay, so I'm just, while I'm here, I might as well do these guys. And you know what, I'm gonna give these little lines, just sort of get some of the veining in there. There. Okay. 
Okay, so then you are going to want to just sort of see where your lines have come in here. Kind of make that, the little creases and folds of where things have happened and just really highlight that. I like to give it a little, it helps with the, show the direction. really light and loose with it. Oh, I guess we should do this right here. Give it a little color. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to get this dark green here and start outlining my leaves. So here you're going to want to bring in some more lines again. Just give that a little bit more effort than just an outline. I mean this is a particular style, of course you can do whatever style that suits your project the best. I'm just going to give it a little bit more texture feel. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to come in and get these little bits in the center, these little stamen, I think they are. Get that maybe in an orangey color. Let's just see, this is going to be more brown, I think. Oops. Throw that on a new layer, and then I'm just going to do that. Okay, so now we have our outlines all done so we can go in and turn off that guide layer and we have this and that is such a quick and easy way just to get to this point already. So let's go ahead and color it in and so I'm just going to go down to the layer one and on the bottom there. So now I'm going to actually just fill in all my flower sections and all the leaf sections on two separate layers and they're just going to be solid and then I'm going to paint over top. It's a really quick and easy way to do it as well. That's what it's all about today so let me show you how to do that. So on this layer I'm going to fill in the flowers so I'm going to pick this um, lighter pink color here and grab my studio pen. It's just a solid pen so any sort of mono you know solid pen will work for this and I'm just going to fill this in here. All I'm doing is just overlapping the lines just so that my I still have that scratchy outline look. And again, this is just the style that I do. You're welcome to color it in however you like, of course. I 
I'm just going to drag my color in and fill that up. Perfect. And then I'm going to go and create a new layer and go and grab this lighter greeny color and just fill in all my green, my greenery. Okay, great. And lastly, I'm just going to fill these little guys in. So I'm going to just create another layer and just pick that brown and make this sort of a lighter orangey color and just fill all these little guys in here, which I feel that's a little bit close to our green. So let's just, there we go, lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Perfect, so we have our solid fill. So I'm gonna do something that seems a little odd, but you'll see why it works in a second. I'm gonna turn off my background layer so this will make more sense. I'm actually gonna take this layer here with the, the pink and just go to my little magic wand and say hue and saturation, and click on layer and just make it white. I could just drag it in there too. Um, that seems a little silly, but you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna leave that like that. Click on the plus sign, tap it, clipping mask and so this way whatever I paint on this layer will be held within this white layer so I'm gonna go back to that pink because I do like that color and I will want it to be that color but I just want to paint with it so I'm gonna to go to painting and I'm going to use the Tamar brush I'm just gonna pop it up to about oh, what is this about 55% 100% opacity and I'm just gonna lightly paint. This is just going to give me a little bit of a textured look and just I think it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. And I'm just going to do some tapping and you can see yeah just gives it a little bit more of a personality. Then I'm going to go back to my painting section, grab this gouache, bring that down to maybe about seven, eight percent and just go on and do a little bit more defined stuff. Maybe a new little, maybe about five or six percent. And I'm just gonna color in here because this would be darker. So just defining these leaves. Again, actually I'm going a little bit smaller, even down to two just to get in here, these little nooks. Coloring in that. Really bringing some depth here. making it look like these folds are happening. So giving a little shadow on them maybe. Maybe just, again, just keep playing with your brush size. It's not an exact science. I'm at about 6% right now. And I think I'm gonna get that darker, so I'm gonna go and pick up this darker red and just maybe we'll have it get a little bit smaller, just really get in there and create that shadow. Little darker bits here and there and really push it back and there starting to have a little a little bit something going on nice and then we can come into our buds here and give those a little pop Right, okay, so maybe that's 
good for now. Let's go and do the green. So same thing. I'm going to go to my green layer and I'm just going to go to my magic wand hue and saturation layer. Just make it white. Then I'm going to add another layer on top. Click on it. Hit clipping mask. And then I'm going to go and get that green color again. And go back. Tamar seemed great. So that will we'll do that. And then just give it a dust. Give it some taps. Maybe that's a bit much. <laughs> Oops. I don't know. Just make it kind of irregular. This is what's kind of fun. Okay. So then I'm going to go back to my gouache and start putting in some shadows. Okay, and then I'm going to go grab the darker color. Just get some darker shadows here. Okay, let's turn our background layer on. Just, I prefer to work like that. Actually, maybe I'll make it a little bit, just slightly less. Ah. I like it to be white so I can see. I don't know why. <laughs> um, let's just have the brown again, and I'm just gonna bump up, or have the green again, rather. Um, I'm just gonna bump up my gouache pen a little bit and maybe just bring in a little bit more color in some areas. And you can play around, you can make that a little bit more vibrant if you want. All right, well, I think that's pretty good for today. You can see how quick and easy that is when you're using a brush damp, of course. You're just miles ahead of the game already, and you can just get to that drawing part and learn lots while you're doing it, too. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one every week. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.